Hello everybody and welcome back to Typical City. Good morning Blues. How are we doing? It is all kicking off in the transfer market. City getting busy. But are they for the right targets? With Mateus Nunes most recently having a bid for him rejected by Wolves. A £47 million bid has gone in for Mateus Nunes. Official statement coming out from Sky Sports News. This is big news because the fee £47 million sounds appealing but the fact that it's been rejected that's worrying because how far do we need to take this now because City have stated they want this deal to be resolved between the 24th and the 28th and this whole saga now needs to let's discuss it let's discuss the whole situation because yesterday I saw a ton of, of City comments and other creators talking about City and their business being positive. And I mean, it, there is positives to City's business, this particular transfer window, very much so. But there is blind faith being thrown at the club at times, just to the point where a City can do no wrong, and they haven't done anything wrong them themselves, but they're in a predicament. Let's not paint a picture that all is hunky-dory and everything's fantastic and City are, are pulling strings and doing pragmatic things and, and, and per shrewd business deals. This is getting bordering on panic buys right now because let's have at it. Let's, let's be realistic because I want to sprinkle a bit of realism in there. This isn't all doom and gloom because I'm talking about today, I'm going to talk about Nunes and Eze. Two brilliant players. Echo that again for you. Two brilliant players. But are they the standard of treble winning Manchester City Football Club? I think Nunes, let's cut to the chase and give you my answer straight away. Nunes more so than Eze. I am more happy with uh, uh, Nunes than I am with Eze, namely because of the price. So first of all, another thing I heard yesterday, it's not my money. It's not my money. Who cares? Give Pep what he wants. It's like, not our money. What are you talking about? Honestly, Blues, we're better than that. That's the laziest approach. This, I, I, I don't even call it journalism because it isn't. And this is from respectable positions, these statements are being made. It's not my money. Come on, guys. We're better than that. And so what do you mean it's not my What? Financial fair play come knocking. It's not my money. I don't care. Who cares what we spend? Who cares? Who gives a shit what we spend? Well, the whole package matters. It has to matter. That's why we're facing 115 bloody charges because of financial fair play. The image of Manchester City and what they spend matters. I don't care what other people are doing, what other clubs are doing and what they're spending. Let them eat each other. Let them make fools of themselves. Just because they're doing it, we don't need to do it. The whole phrase, if I jumped off a cliff, would you, springs to mind. No, no, we wouldn't. We are the standard. We are a lone wolf when it comes to image and, and how a football club is run. I think we're very closely followed by Brighton, but we have to hold our hands up and go, we are in a predicament right now that is out of Manchester City's football club's control because we have lost Kevin De Bruyne. You can't do anything about that. That's just unforeseen, unfortunate circumstances. Pakatar's deal falling through due to betting scandals. How can we plan for that? We can't plan for that. There's nothing that can be done about that. But don't pretend it's okay. Let's not ignore it. It's a problem. And now uh, you go to Danny Olmo. Uh, the deal's too expensive. The player said he wants to stay at RB Leipzig. Because he wants to stay, because City have said no to the fee. And they've made it clear to his agent and to Danny Olmo that no, we're not going to pay what they're asking for. We're more likely to come in for you in 2024 when the release clause is triggered, or tr we can trigger it at least, for 55 million euros. That makes more sense. But the player himself isn't then going to go to RB Leipzig and say, I want to join Manchester City even though they're not going to pay for me this summer. He's going to say, I want to stay. So the RB Leipzig fans go, good on you, Danny Almo. You want to stay. Same reason Pakatar did that to the West Ham fans after he scored that penalty, because he knows he's got to stay at West Ham. He has to stay. So you're trying to be respectful. This isn't them rejecting City. Far from it. In fact, we've got pull power that's beyond almost every Premier League club right now. When Manchester City come knocking at the door, you open the door and say, yes, please. Can I have a bit of Manchester City? That's what they do. But right now, we have to admit that we've lowered our standard. We went in for verts after Danny Almo. We dipped our toe in the water, said... Uh, by Leverkusen, what, what are you thinking? Verts, 100 million euros? <laughs> See you later. We're not paying 100 million euros for that. That's a joke. We're not paying that amount of money for him right now. No way. Walking away from the deal. So that's done. So we've gone from Kevin De Bruyne injury, Pakatar, no, ha not happening. Danny Almo, not happening. Verts, not happening. Now we're on to our fifth and sixth choice player, you know? In terms of like the, the, the priority list, I'm sure this is good from City that we have players like this that we can go in for. It shows that we're not gung-ho and we are 
calculated in our approach that we don't just have a plan A and or maybe a plan B. We've got a plan C, a plan D, a plan E, probably a plan F, and so forth. You know, so it's good that City are going for these players, but let's not just talk about them like they're bloody brilliant and all of a sudden this is fantastic business from City and every single player we go in for is of world-class standard because it's City that are targeting them. Let's sprinkle a bit of realism in the situation. Come on, Blues. We, this isn't ideal that we have to keep going to the next player. We have to keep going lower and lower and lower in terms of the standard of player that we're bringing in. Nunes, I'm happy with. Before I get going, I do want to quickly bring up his stats which are somewhere on my computer, somewhere that I need to find. But um, in terms of the player himself, I'm, I'm, I'm happy that City are targeting him. What this means for Calvin Phillips is interesting. Um, Nunes, 41 appearances, 2,938 minutes, two goals and two assists. That's not what he's in the team for. 86.5 passing accuracy, that's fantastic. Something I really want to highlight is dribbling ability. The same goes for... Um, Eze as well, brilliant dribbling ability. So you've got two dribbles per game there from a defensive midfielder. This is the whole tactics now, the, the whole approach to City's um, acquisitions and, and their transfer targets have very much been players that can carry the ball, including Gvardiol. Out of our defenders, maybe John Stones can, can pip him in terms of ability on the ball, but Gvardiol's ability, we've already seen it against Burnley, Sevilla, Newcastle. Gvardiol carries the ball. Doku. Come on, it's just ridiculous. Just a stupid talent. That's just a, his take on ability is off the charts. His frightening ability. You had Kovacic. He's carrying the ball again. Another player that can carry the ball. You you you, you rewind the clock. Go back to 2022, 2023 season. There weren't that many players in our team that could genuinely beat a player one on one with almost certainty. Kevin De Bruyne could do it once in a while, but it's surprisingly quick. Kevin De Bruyne. So he could do it. Not always, that's not really his game though. Phil Foden is probably the closest dribbler that we have to anything that we've signed so far in terms of take on ability. And then you start asking Bernardo Silva, once he beats them, he, he, he sometimes has to cut back because of his speed. So we didn't really have this ability to, to, to beat a player. And that's not always going to be the way we play. If anything, it could be a last resort. But having this option is fantastic. To, to beat players with speed. That's what we've not really got much of at the minute, and we're slowly adding more of that. The ball moves quicker than people do. There's no two ways about it. It always moves quicker, and I will always suggest that passing the ball is a more productive way of scoring goals than it is just simply sprinting towards the goal with the ball at your feet. That's very basic, simple. That, that, that passing is the more productive way to do it, but having that option to get get yourself out of trouble, you get you find yourself down a, a dead end in a blind alley, you know, and you can dribble your way out of it. And players in tight spaces that can do that is brilliant. Having Nunes, his dribbling ability is fantastic. Let's have a look at Eze. Also, his um, 1.5 dribbles per game, brilliant. That's really good. The one thing I do want to highlight for Eze is his goals: ten goals and four assists. Now that's ten goals in a Crystal Palace side. You know, so that's really good numbers. You know, you expect Ayu and Zaha to be putting those numbers in a Crystal Palace team that was short of ideas when it comes to goal scoring last season, in particular under Patrick Vieira. So, I think there is a, a, a real approach and quite an obvious one now that City's targets are players that can beat players. The fact that Nunez's £47 million bid has been rejected is tough to take because this now means it's going to be over £50 million, almost certainly. What are the add-ons going to be on top of that? You factor in £70 million for Eze, this is overpriced. This is overpriced. Do we have to pay it? Don't come to me with, it's not my money, that's such a lazy approach because it will be a problem that we overpay. Not only will it be a problem for financial fair play because we need, when we hand the books over, do you think City just goes, it's not my money, it's Shake Mansour's money. When Khaldun does it, he goes, oh, it's not my money. He's got to look after the books. You've got to look after the books. You know, it's important. Don't ignore it. £70 million for Eze is overpriced. There's no denying that. That's stupid money for that player. He's more in the £50 million, £60 million mark and I'm happier. But if, you, if, we, if we could get these two for 100 million, maximum, maximum of 110, I think that makes sense. Okay, you start getting into 120, 130 million for these two players combined, it's too much. It's too much. Um, but I, this, just let me echo the fact that these are not bad players. Uh, they are not. They are good players. And football's a fickle game. In two, three weeks, we could see them both in, in Manchester City shirts, having fantastic game, as they scoring goals, Matias Nunes pulling strings in the midfield, dictating the play, who needs Kevin De Bruyne? You know, it could be talking about things like that. That's very realistic. 
But we paint pictures as City fans sometimes that are totally unrealistic, without any sense of realism. Everything's either a glass half full or the glass has been smashed. Do you know what I mean? It's not all doom and gloom and it's not the end of the world going in for players like this. But let's not pretend it's better than it is, you know, because we've had to lower our standards. That is the facts. That is the facts. What this means for Calvin Phillips in terms of Nunes, I'm worried about Calvin Phillips. I was worried about Calvin Phillips before this transfer window, which is, I think he was doomed. The second we went in for Nunes, it's like, yeah, he's finished. And I mean... Nunes predominantly playing down the spine of the team. Eze is going to play in a more advanced role if we were to sign these two players. Calvin Phillips, it, there's no space for him. The fact that he doesn't want to leave is a good indication of how well this club's run. We had trouble selling Zinchenko, didn't we, a year ago? It was Wolves, in fact, who came in for Zinchenko before he went to Arsenal. The year before he went to Arsenal, Wolves came in with an offer for Zinchenko, if you remember that, and he said he didn't want to go. He wants to stay at Manchester City. Calvin Phillips doesn't want to go, he wants to stay at Manchester City, because with that club now, you want to play for Manchester City. The pull power is there for all to see. So that is very, very positive news, that we can create a transfer list, a short list of players that um, pretty much all of them will want to join. You know, there are very few players that are going to turn the nose up at the chance to play under Pep Guardiola. And with the infrastructure of Manchester City and the facilities and the potential wages and the chances of winning trophies are just through the roof compared to most other clubs. So there's your positive news. That's not me being doom and gloom, but let's be real about it, Blues. Let's talk realistic about these things because I, I think there's some nonsense from respectable creators out there. Nonsense. I don't want to create beef. I, I love everyone here talking City, and I, and I think we should talk about City openly, and everyone's opinion should be taken on board. My opinion isn't better than your opinion, though, and your opinion isn't better than my opinion. That's the nature of the game. That's why I love talking about it, because what I say can be hated and by some people. You, you might think I'm talking absolute nonsense. Some of you might be thinking, oh, that Johnny, he talks some sense. Either way, it doesn't matter, really. I want to hear your opinions, though, Blues. Get in the comments. What do you think about the price tag of £47 million being rejected for Nunes? How high do we have to go now? What do you think about the £70 million price tag for Eze and the combined package of these two players? And how good are they in relation to the targets that we've already openly gone in for with Pakatar, Dani Almo and Verts? What do you think about this, Blues? Is this good business for City or panic business? Get in the comments. I want to hear your thoughts. Like and subscribe. Typical City is the channel, and I'll see you in the next one. This is Typical City now. Holding up silver.